Hi, uh, Toby Hodges from Yachting World. We're on sailing on board the Lagoon 51. We have about 20 knots of breeze and we're now sailing with code zero and with going across and with a little bit of the waves. Good fun, we're now averaging nine to 10 knots, um, occasionally up to 11 with, with some waves as well. So we are averaging eight knots with about a meter sea running, tacking into it, tacking through about 90 degrees and yeah, making good work through quite little choppy seas. We've got the Katana 50 up ahead of us and the excess and the balance. Nice to see all these multi hulls around. So this has the big um, mainsail on it, so an extra large square top on it, gives a bit more sail area. The mast is further forward, uh, so there's no self-tacking jib option on this, but you get uh, a larger Genoa. You see the sheets come in each side, and plenty of drive off that. And now, yeah, with a big 150 square meter, meter square code zero, We've got plenty of drive going forward now, so yeah, keeping double double figure speeds on is not bad for a big old yacht. So we are Co Zero sailing here in about 18 knots true. Designer from VPLP Vincent on the helm, and we are averaging about nine knots here with a bit of swell on our quarter. And this is the sort of conditions you know, a big 20 ton cat like this really likes, you know, good steady mid-teens type, late teens type breeze when you can set full sail. So this is on about the limit of when they would normally reef. Um, and obviously this is a big uh, reaching sail as well. So we're going off the wind a fair bit, sort of between about 90 and 120 true. But she's making some good speed. Nice long waterline length means you get places. You can start to average nine, ten knots. You can do 200 mile days. So while we're sailing along here, a few features of this to point out really. Um, two access to the big flybridge area. Flybridge really obviously important for relaxing space. This one they've gone for a central helm pedestal to steer everything from. Uh, so the ability to get up at that from either side deck obviously really helps. At the moment you see the Code Zero sheets coming across this side deck as well. Otherwise, there's not much to foul the progress around it. But a big coach reef area also gives you the option to integrate these solar panels as well so you can have 2750 watts solar panel power on this coach roof you can see from maybe this angle as well how the mast is stepped relatively far forward the forward end of the coach roof uh, and in, over the last sort of decade or so Lagoon have been moving their mast further aft and running with self-tacking jibs. When you put the mast further forward, you have a larger Genoa earlier, so, so you can't have a self-tacking jib option on this. What it does mean is what we've seen today is that the 
general will give you more drive. So when you've got some waves and things, you can really keep the speed on. We happily averaged over eight knots going upwind. And so that really, really helped. Just furling away the code zero now. So again, it's an option to have an electric furler for the Genoa and the code zero, but makes it very easy to do. So one person can push the button and let off the sheet. Uh, yeah, when you're, whether you're just getting rid of the sail or whether you want to jibe it. So now you've got the option of going through the jibe or even you, you could stick the engine on if you want and help it through the tack and go around a nice civilized way like that. It's like we're going for the jibe option. This, forgive me if I've mentioned it before, but this has the extra large square top mainsail on it, so a bit more power in the mainsail as well. Pretty easy way to manage a big reaching sail like this. So it's turning blocks there for your spinnaker or Code Zero sheet. And the reason being is you can then lead them up here onto the turning blocks and just use these winches up here. It just means that you know a couple can sail the boat comfortably from from the flybridge area. So this one is number one hull and it's done six months trialing and uh, yeah, being sailed by Nico and his partner around a European tour. So you can do everything from the winch here and the two winches on the other side there. Yeah, another option that helps obviously is having the, the mainsail travel on and a, a flat winder line driver which just means these buttons here can control your traveler nice and easily without need the standard would go to a winch so you can see how in this compact area you've got all the lines to be able to manage and if you stick it on autopilot you can do it all single-handedly Elsewhere, it's a pretty tried and tested format, but I'll point out a few of the things that, that really um, make this 51 what it is, the USPs, I guess. The main thing is, is, is the size. So about what we used to consider 45 feet would be about the size for owner operators. But this is, yeah, now, nowadays, as you can see from the sail handling systems, it's easy to manage shorthanded, so you can go large, you can go to about this 50 foot size, much larger, and then you'll be really looking at um, having a professional crew as well. So this boat really does maximize the space you can get on a 50 footer. And starting here, I mean, those extra large transoms there and swim platforms, you can see how it widens out as well. It's a huge area each side uh, which will come into its own anchor as as will the option for this uh, big drop down tender and swim platform here. So popular option on lagoons now. And they've Yard has really worked hard on uh, circulation of the boat so as well as having those those two walkways up and onto the flybridge yeah how easy you can get around this area as well so plenty of social space you've got the forward cockpit you've got a massive flybridge and then you get this yeah, protected aft cockpit area here with the main saloon you see a lot a lot of space up here in the main saloon as well So this is the engine bay on the Lagoon 51. So pretty much identical to port and starboard. This one, the port one, has the hydraulic pack for the uh, for the transom bathing platform. Uh, yeah, 60, sorry, 80 Yanmar. Sail dry is a standard. 
and you can see you've got pretty good, pretty much full access all around it. So it's easy to pull out if you ever need to. Easy, he says. I couldn't do it. Uh, there's the bar that goes across to the other um, quadrant. And then you can see there is some insulation up on that forward bulkhead as well. here we have three cabins set up so bear in mind we're still under sail here going through through some waves nice big ensuite aft cabin here extra refrigeration option big big wardrobe and the mirror I, for me the thing that really stands out is the amount of volume there are in these hulls and this exemplifies it the option to squeeze in another double cabin here in the house and that's how you can get um, yeah, a four five or six cabin format on this size yacht now so that will then share this head shower area with another forward double cabin. Plenty of volume in these hulls. So having this step up in the saloon is a really good option to have, and really makes this a large, large saloon area for this class of boat. Desk area here, TV under there, so you can see how it could be, how much space it gives you to, to live and work aboard really. And then you descend into the starboard hull. And if you choose the three cabin, the, well this one, four cabin option to have an owner's hull, look how much space, volume and light you're rewarded with. And this is really where you see just why these are so popular. I mean, it's, this is home from home comfort. Well, more, more than, more comfortable than my home. Astonishing amounts of volume. Ability to have this such open bulkheads as well. So some serious structure in there to, to allow this much open plan living big big hull windows and that slides across to close off this hull area and then yeah you have the option here of having just a huge changing working adaptable area how you want to, to, to have it yes yes you could have a cabin there but in the owner's hull format yeah use it for clothes storage etc and then forward from here is just heads and shower area so separate heads in there and then a massive great bathroom shower area forward his and hers inboard and outboard sinks so fully equipped like this the game 51 is about 1.3 million euros so the yard can build about 40 of these in Bordeaux a year and having launched the boat in April that was his world premiere they've sold over 100 of these Lagoon 51s already and I understand that is pretty much all to private owners some of which do put them into charter but 
the majority using them uh, to, to live and work aboard. Thank you.